Hello folks, welcome to another episode of the Rifle Chair Channel. I want to talk to you today about the, uh, the Tika CTR. And the Tika CTR is, is, it might even be my favorite rifle. Now, I'm a big the Enfield fan and, and whatnot, but, but this here is really all, honestly, it's probably my favorite uh, bolt action rifle. I started shooting this one in 2019, early 2019, so I guess about a year and a half I've been running this rifle now. <clears throat> and um, one of the first trials that I put this rifle through was during the 2019 Cabin Fever Challenge, which is uh, at an 8-inch eight eight inch circle at 100 meters. We're shooting five rounds standing, five rounds kneeling, five rounds prone, five rounds sitting in that order with a mandatory five round reload in between each shooting position. And you time yourself and a score is rendered. And I I shot probably the best I've ever shot was with this rifle, doing that exercise. Done some preliminary precision work with it, but nothing that I would, I want. Uh, nothing that I think, are, I need to spend more time in that department with this rifle. Um, put some really good quality ammunition through it <clears throat> today because we're on it's basically a running sentry I'm, I'm out on the 40 acres which is basically a very rural i should say very remote uh wilderness location and for that purpose um i'm running 180 grain this is 308 i'm running 180 grain Federal ammunition. These are power shocks, and they're traveling at around 2,750 feet per second, more than sufficient for the uh, for that purpose. You know, at least within close range, because that's what we're talking about, which is wilderness defense. Mm. I'm running instant this morning. <clears throat> I just couldn't be bothered to make perk. Working on the. Uh, Rifle chair ranch out here uh, on a cabin, trying to get it uh, a little bit more livable. One of the reasons why we have uh, a remote location away from the town is because I don't like the way things are going. But between all these, um, you know, anyway, Canada's in real trouble. Let's put it that way. So having a having a remote cabin that you can then you you can access somewhat easily is uh, is beneficial. So, back to the C Tika CTR. Um, <clears throat> so, let's put it this way. The Canadian Rangers adopted this rifle. Now, I, I was in the Rangers once upon a time, and I retired in June 2019. And I had been in, this, in the service for 17 years. So I ran the Lee Enfield for that entire time. In fact, uh, you know, it's, you know, as we're doing administration, I've been sitting there thinking about, geez, you know, maybe, maybe it's time for me to retire. This is during the gifting of the Lee Enfield thing. And uh, it wasn't a ceremony, it was just an admin, you know, filling more paperwork. And getting the paperwork all straightened away with, with clerks and the warrant officers and so on. And uh, it wasn't really until I met with him and told him, I'm releasing. So I never even got to see the C-19 that he had brought all the way up to where I live. There you go. Here's your C-19. I never even opened the box. <laughs> no, I'd, I've been involved in the tests, the trials. I was involved in the Human Factors Requirements Survey. And so when you look at these, these firearms, um, you kind of... It, what you really need to do is look at the the cost per unit. Now, the cost per unit for the C19 was I don't know I can't remember now, but it was something like twenty or thirty thousand dollars per rifle. So why are we spending so much money on a CT, essentially a fancy C, CTR like this Tika CTR? Um, why do they spend that kind of money? Well, you got to think. Okay, so we're going to hire a consulting firm. They're going to go out. They're going to survey all of these rangers, and they're going to pay the rangers to come to this meeting and, you know, hotel accommodations, food, per diems for your consultants. 
And of course, there's a, there was a team of warrant officers that were there as well. Some of them were they're into the ballistics. We were talking about, you know, I was talking to one of the warrant officers there about the type of bullet that they were going to build this rifle around. It was going to be a uh, an A-frame bullet like the like the Nosler Partition, 180 grain bullet. That's what these things were made for. They want a bullet that's going to be able to bone, put a put a polar bear down, for example. You know, like a hundred percent predator. You know that polar bear is coming for you. And they wanted to have a rifle that could deal with animals like that. And so the rifle is essentially built around the 180 grain nozzle partition or an A-frame style bullet. Now, very, very expensive ammunition, by the way. They were running 180 grain ammunition during the trials. And yeah, they were nozzlers. I think it was uh, federal ammunition, factory ammunition. But anyway, somewhere in the supply chain, I bet you they'll just be running ball out of it. So... But for wilderness defense purposes, it'll be something similar to this ammunition right here. This is a power shock, it's not an A-frame. So it's just a budget bullet. <clears throat> anyway, all across Canada, these, these things were going on. Trials, tests, you know, uh, consulting fees. And so it's no wonder that if it, when you actually do the budgeting, that it works out to twenty or $30,000 per rifle. Now... Sure, you can go get yourself a Tika CTR. Actually, it's called a Tika Arctic, which is all stainless. It's essentially the same rifle. It's all stainless, except that there's no A2 arrestor on the end here. Um, it's actually got the front sight. Now, I actually do have the, the rear sight and the front sight from the Tika Arctic, which is the same as the C19, except that you'll see that, and this is Tika Arctic wood on a CTR rifle. If, if you're wondering, where the hell did he get that stock from? Um, is that um, this wood is uh, heavy this is a heavy rifle as so kitted especially when you put an optical sight on here which is the Hilux 1 to, one to 4 by 24 CMR which is close medium range and these are half minute adjustments with zero stop and illuminated reticle so I, I like I like illuminated, illuminated reticles but Getting back to the stock, this is, it looks like a birch stock. <clears throat> Here's the deal, guys. A Y, y birch, or I should say a Y laminated stock over the plastic CTR stock. Uh, when you're in the high Arctic, and it's 50 or 60 below, <clears throat> if you get any kind of an impact on that rifle, the plastic is just going to shatter. It gets very brittle. And so they wanted a, a laminated wood stock. You know, World War II Germany. They ran, they ran laminated stocks for a reason. You look at Boyd's, uh, Boyd stocks. Um, they're really popular. A lot of bench rest shooters like to run those laminated stocks. They're strong. Okay, they're durable. They're reliable. They're robust. Um, the checkering on here is absolutely wonderful. It's nice and grippy. Nice recoil pad on here. Uh, just a beautiful rifle. I love this, this the CTR. Definitely one of my f more favorite rifles. It does have the oversized bolt knob. It is plastic. Unlike the C19, which is, I believe it's aluminum. And the cocking shroud is also aluminum. I should say plastic, which I don't like, but maybe I'll swap those out one day for the real, some, for some better pieces. I got PRS aluminum uh, Leupold rings on here, 30 millimeter tube. Only, the only thing that would make this thing better for the bush is just to get rid of the optical sight and run open sights. Like I said, I've got those. I just need to get a, a gunsmith to machine a groove in the top of the barrel here so I can fit it. And I essentially have my own C19. So I retired and um, never got my own C19, but... Well, at least not one of the Queen's rifles. You know, build my own. So uh, <clears throat> there it is. You you had asked uh, me about this rifle a few times after watching the the Cabin Fever Challenge video, 2019, um, which I think actually came top of the class for bolt action in that one. This here, actually, this sling is kind of interesting. This is Swiss military. It's even got the three crowns on here, and I got picked this up for twenty dollars over at Tradex. Um, had to get some fancy, uh, these are actually 
metal U.S. sling swabbles on here, but this is a, a, a Swedish military leather sling. I mean, for twenty dollars, you get a high quality leather sling. It's awesome. In fact, it's, it's probably a good idea if I went back there and bought another two or three of them because they're that good and very adjustable. You know, easy on the shoulder. It's a it's about an inch and a quarter. You know, kind of your typical leather sling. Uh, the magazines on the CTR C19 and the Tika Arctic are, I would, put, I would put them on par with the, with the Ranger 557 or the, or the, the, the CZ 557 detachable box magazines. I really like the, um, the plastic, um, follower on here, not follower, um, floor plate. <clears throat> These these are very similar in nature. They're not like a Lee Enfield magazine where you have the two forward mounted um, retention tabs. These are, this is more like a, a double stack single feed. So it feeds from the center of the magazine as you see here. The follower is plastic and is very reliable. So it's essentially kind of like a pistol magazine. You got to press down and, 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 uh, and slave it in. So when you're doing things like, for example, the human factors requirements, if you know you're going to be having small people or, or females that may not have very, very strong hands, like for example, feeding so some females, some males, some people that can't even load their own pistol magazines. So these ones are, the spring isn't that bad. It's, it's not difficult to load. But you gotta press down and and feed in with these magazines. Unlike the Lee Enfield magazine, which you can just kind of punch them in because it's the rimmed round. You can't do it. You can't have a magazine like this necessarily for a rimmed round. You can for the 308 though. <clears throat> so uh, maybe what we'll do is fire a few rounds off and call it a video. Hope you guys are doing great. Cheers, and as always, make belief up. Well, check that out. The sun has decided to come out. So I've been in the bush now for about four days. And uh, I guess I look like it. Probably smell like it too. Anyway, CTR will run this uh, a 10 round cereal. Uh, there's 10 rounds of Hurtenberg full metal jacket inside the rifle. Uh, let's run it. I'll run it fast. Now, because of the ejector plunger system with the CTR, the Tika T3, it doesn't seem to matter if you're running the rifle slow or if you're running it hard. It ejects around pretty much the same distance uh, away from the shooter, but we'll, we'll check that out here in just a minute. Okay, we're shooting at 50 meters. Safety works. That's it. So the uh, ammunition is roughly one and a half meters to my right and to the rear and piled in a nice little patch here. So I was shooting over here to that target. There is the brass about a meter and a half away. Rock on, CTR. Maple Leaf up.
that's a bit too much. A bit too much rifle trip.